June is Pride Month and there are a lot of activities to celebrate the LGBTQIA plus community, including the 52nd annual Pride Festival and Parade. How did Twin Cities Pride get started? Good question. WCCO's Kirsten Mitchell takes a look back at the long history here in Minnesota. It's one of the nation's largest Pride celebrations. But as Andy Otto with Twin Cities Pride explains, it wasn't always that way. The story is that there were 25 folks here in Loring Park. The first year was 1972. And the other 25 went to march up Nicollet Avenue. And the purpose behind it was that the 25 that were here could bail those that decided to march out of jail if they were jailed at that point. The protest marked the third anniversary of the Stonewall riots in New York. Back then it was you could be jailed for it, you could be persecuted. There was no protections, there wasn't the hate crime bill, there wasn't any of that. To protect themselves, the first Pride program in 1973 was designed to be folded and tossed like a Frisbee if needed. They stood up and we owe a lot to those folks. You know, I get to live authentically today because of what they did back then and to stand up and fight and say we're not going anywhere and you can't make us go anywhere. And they persevered through attempts by the Minneapolis City Council to block the festivities. In 1978, the Pride Festival moved to Mears Park in St. Paul. It was in protest of voters repealing a 1974 non-discrimination ordinance. As a bitter debate on gay rights divided St. Paul and saw voters rejecting the city's four-year-old gay rights ordinance. One year, 1982, there were two separate festivals, Gay Pride and Lesbian Pride. They reunited the following year. I now have absolutely no problem with letting people know that I've tested positive and they've all been very supportive. Then, during the AIDS epidemic in the 80s, Pride was a place for resources and support. You could come to Pride and you could find those resources. You could get educated because we know in the 80s there was a lot of misinformation out there as to what was happening, how to protect yourself from it. By the mid-90s, of a day at the Lesbian Gay State Fair, that's what it's like. The festival emphasized the experiences of bisexual and transgender people. Corporations started sponsoring the event. When you enter this park, your family. And the crowds at Loring Park grew larger and larger. That is the biggest change that's happened in the organization, is that it's not just focused on one weekend anymore, it's focused on the whole year and allowing people to live authentically. Pride's extensive history in the Twin Cities is still being written today. Every year, depending on what's happening, kind of switches the story of what Pride turns out to be. With photojournalist Jose Pasquale. Kirsten Mitchell, WCCO News. Twin Cities Pride organizers expect around 600,000 people to attend the festivities this year.